Kubwa Church Church family. Thank you so much for joining us for church today. My name is Paula and it is a beautiful opportunity to be in the presence of God. Really excited as well to be in the presence of God because His presence is all that we need. My name is Pascal. Excited to be hosting you. Now listen, it's week four of our sermon series, Blessed Families. We truly hope that you are being blessed and that your families as well are being blessed. I wonder, Paula, what has stood out for you throughout this entire sermon series on Blessed Families? I think for me, it's the reminder that family is a very vital part of our lives. And whatever we do, we ought to take it seriously, but also involving God in every bit of our families. Involving God. That's key. That's key. What I've been reminded is that I have a part to play to see my family getting blessed by God. Absolutely. Now, whoever you are, wherever you're watching from, thank you so much for joining us for service today. We'd like to just get to know you. Just leave your name or where you're watching from. We'd like to connect with you and get to know you. Are you watching us for your first time? You are a special guest. Whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, listen, click that link that has just appeared in the comment section below. We would like to connect with you, get to know how we can serve you. But if you're watching on air, send us an email connect at watetochurch.com. We'll be sure to get in touch with you. Now, the Bible says this in Psalms 122. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. I hope you are excited and you're looking forward to the rest of this service. But for now, the worship team is ready. Why don't you get up on your feet? Let's go and worship Jesus with these beautiful songs.
Yeah, 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 yeah. Got me praying. <laughs> From the valley. From the valley to the mountain top. We will join. We will join the, the angel song. Be praying. Oh, God, be praying. God, be praying. So we lift up a shout. So we lift Oh 
important because Jesus is in the room and where the Spirit of Jesus is the Bible says there is freedom and so my friend today I want to take some time and pray for you as we're total family we're going through a family series called the blessed families and Jesus not only came to save us from our sins but Jesus also came to bring healing to every brokenness that we can face in our relationships. So if you're facing a difficulty in your family, Jesus is in the room and he wants to heal you. And at this moment, would you lift your hands up to Jesus and let me pray a prayer over you right now. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much that Jesus came into our world to save us from our sins. But also Jesus came into our world to save us from the effects of sins like broken relationships and today specifically as the Watoro family as we take some time and address the issues in our families God I want to dedicate every family that is represented in this room in this very moment God I'm praying may you turn the hearts of the fathers to their children May you turn the hearts of children to their fathers. God, I'm praying for those marriages that are struggling. God, I'm praying you, the God of miracles, do a miracle and heal relationships. For those children who have wandered away and the parents are praying, God, bring our sons, bring our daughters back. God, I'm praying that may you draw the children back to yourself, but also back to the families, oh God. And Lord, as we believe that when the families are healthy, we can experience wholeness at a city level, at a national level. God, I'm praying that the families in this nation will be healed. That every family that is a part of this service will experience freedom, peace, and joy because the healer is in the room. And Father, I'm praying for every other need represented in this place. God, there's nothing that is impossible for you. You are healer, you are provider, you are deliverer. And right now we offer all these burdens to you knowing that when we cast our cares upon you, we're able to receive peace that surpasses all understanding. So God, I thank you so much for hearing all our prayers in this place. I pray all this in the matchless name of Jesus and everybody said a big amen. Come on, celebrate Jesus in your own way in your room right now. There's no one like Jesus. Well, family, welcome to our celebration service. And it's always a joy to have you worship together with us because we believe when we come together, Jesus shows up and it makes a big difference in our lives, in our cities, and in our nations, wherever you find yourself. Welcome to church. Well, as we're children family, we are continuing in our, our family series called Blessed Families or Blessed Families because we believe that God wants to bless your family. And so, would you just get your Bible, get your notebook, get your pen, and put your hands together and usher in the Word of the Lord because you are going to be blessed today. Thank you, Pastor Eddie, for that meaningful moment of prayer. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today to worship Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as we get ready to hear God's Word, let's pray. Heavenly Father, through your Word, you teach us how we ought to live as individuals, as families, and as communities. Speak to us right now through your word, in Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. Three weeks ago, we began teaching about blessed families, because it is God's desire, it is God's intention to bless every family. He blessed the first family of Adam and Eve, 
and he still blesses families today. And so from what we have learned so far, the messages that have been shared with us, we've understood that families that fear God and obey him will be blessed, are blessed. We've also understood that parenting is a sacred trust from God. It is a God-given responsibility. And last week, we understood that the voice of you, the parent, matters in shaping the lives of your children. Today, as we continue talking about blessed families, we want to talk about honoring the marriage covenant. Because marriage is the foundation of a family. And so blessed families are those in which marriage is honored. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 declares that marriage should be honored by all, by everyone. And the marriage bed be kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Friends, honoring marriage means recognizing the worth of marriage and demonstrating that understanding in our behavior. Unfortunately, a growing trend in our um, society today is that marriage is not being honored the way it should be. For example, marriage is now treated like a contract that people enter into, get into, and walk out of if one party is not happy or both parties are not happy. Marriage is also treated like a casual relationship, sexual relationship between a man and a woman with no serious commitment. And there are people who treat marriage like a business venture for financial security and social security. Especially if one gets married to a person who is wealthy or a person with a high profile. But according to the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, marriage is not a contract. Marriage is not an ordinary relationship. Marriage is not a casual relationship between a man and a woman. Marriage is not a business venture to provide you with financial security or social security. Marriage is a covenant relationship between a husband and the husband I'm talking about is a man by birth and a wife, a woman by birth that God himself has established. God is the one who has established marriage as a covenant relationship between a husband and wife. A covenant, by definition, is a relationship between two or more parties that is bound by an oath, a vow, a pledge, a promise, that they make to each other. So, since God established marriage as a covenant relationship between a husband and wife, marriage must be honored. It must be given the honor it deserves. Luke 19, from verse 3 to 6, tells us that some Pharisees, some religious leaders, came to Jesus to test him. So they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, Jesus responded, that at the beginning the Creator met the male and female and said, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate, Jesus declared. According to Jesus, when a man and a woman get married, they enter into a covenant relationship that binds them together as one before God for life, for a lifetime. 
That's why Jesus declared with authority that what God has joined together, let no one, let nothing, let no circumstance separate. To help us appreciate why God established marriage as a covenant, let me point out that God by nature is a covenant maker. God takes his commitments seriously. For example, God made a covenant with Abraham that he would make his name great and that he would give his descendants the land of Canaan as their possession. God also made a covenant with Noah that the flood would never again destroy the earth. God made a covenant with David to establish his kingdom forever. And this is good for us to know. Our relationship with God today is based on the new covenant through Jesus Christ, his son. Now, God is not only a covenant maker, he is also a covenant keeper because he is faithful in fulfilling his promises. God fulfills every promise he makes. He acts on his word because he's a covenant maker and a covenant keeper. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 tells us, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Come and give the Lord a hand cup of praise. He is a faithful God, a covenant keeper. So friends, since God is a covenant maker and keeper and he gave us marriage as a covenant between a husband and wife, God expects us to honor marriage. Through his prophet Malachi, God told the Israelites that Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with, with tears. You weep and wail because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why. It is because the Lord is the witness between you and, you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. The text we've read shows us that one of the reasons God was not pleased with the Israelites, his people, especially the Israelite men, is that the Israelite men did not honor their marriages as a covenant between them and their wives. As a result, God turned a deaf ear to their prayers and their worship. Married people, and everyone who looks forward to getting married one day. If we don't honor marriage as a covenant between a husband and wife, God will not bless our families. But if we honor marriage as a covenant relationship between a husband and wife, God will surely bless our families because Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. So how do we honor marriage? That's a very important question. It is a critical question. There are many ways we honor marriage, but I want to highlight some habits, friends, that we need to embrace, we need to cultivate to honor marriage, a covenant relationship between a husband and wife. First, we honor marriage by being faithful in marriage, by being a faithful husband, by being a faithful wife. In Malachi chapter 2, from verse 14b to 15, God told the Israelite men who had dishonored their marriages, you have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner. The wife of your marriage covenant has not the one God made you. You belong to him in body and spirit. You are accountable to God. God owns you. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Hebrews chapter 13 verse, verse 4 that we read earlier on 
declares that give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. For God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. One of the vows a couple makes on their wedding day is that of remaining faithful to each other as long as both of them live. I publicly made that pledge to my wife during our wedding 10 years ago. And my wife too made that pledge of being faithful faithful to me during our wedding. Listen, friends. God expects us to keep the marriage vows we make to each other because God takes what we pledge seriously. Here in Uganda, adultery is no longer a criminal offense. It was cropped from the penal code by the Constitutional Court a number of years ago. But let me tell you something. Before God, adultery and any form of sexual immorality is a violation of his moral law. The court might say, courts of law might say, adultery is no longer a criminal offense, but before God, it is sin. That's why we need to be faithful in our marriages. You see, from time to time, I bump into couples who signed the True Love Waits card as a commitment to be faithful in their marriage. And you know what they tell me? They say, Pastor Calvin, we enjoy our marriage today because we made a commitment to live a sexually pure life before we got married by signing that little True Love Waits card. Hey, we can make a commitment to be faithful to each other, friends. And so, married guys and ladies, as God's servant speaking to you today, I charge you, make a fresh commitment to be faithful to your wife, to be faithful to your husband. Hey, don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your husband. Do not commit adultery. Run away from adultery. Don't defile your marriage. A special gift from God to you. A holy covenant between you and your spouse with another man, with another woman. And if you have been unfaithful to your spouse, I want to encourage you. I want to appeal to you. Ask God to forgive you. Ask your spouse to forgive you. But shun sexual immorality. Run away from sexual immorality. And if you need help, you're struggling with unfaithfulness in your marriage. Seek help. Talk to a pastor. Talk to a marriage counselor. Talk to a couple, godly couple, mature couple. You will be helped. Don't die alone. We are here to help you. And single men and women, this is my challenge to you. Make a commitment to live a sexually pure life before you get married. So that when you get married, you will continue being faithful to your spouse. So we honor marriage by being faithful in marriage. Secondly, we honor marriage by submitting to each other. In his letter to believers in Ephesus, Apostle Paul told them, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your, own, to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. One of the main things Paul emphasizes in his letter to the Ephesian church is how Christians should relate to each other. He teaches that believers ought to behave toward each other as children of light, as those who belong to Christ, who belong to God, not as children of the devil. So according to Paul, one of the ways Christians live as children of light is by submitting to each other out of reverence for Christ. 
Paul makes it clear that the principle of submission applies to relationships among Christians and a husband and wife relationship. But Paul emphasizes that our motivation to submit to each other should flow out of reverence for Christ. It should flow out of the desire, out of the commitment to honor and please Jesus. It is common knowledge that we all struggle with submitting to another person. Adults struggle with submitting to another person. And children also struggle with submitting to their parents or to their teachers. In fact, I experience that from time to time as a parent. And as a matter of fact, our world today is anti-submission. People don't want to hear the word submission because they don't want to be accountable to anybody or be under anyone's authority. So the popular talk today is respect my rights, respect my freedom, respect my independence, give me my space, respect my space. So submission is associated with servitude, oppression of people, enslavement, or treating someone as a slave. But when Paul tells Christians to submit to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, or as a husband and wife in a marriage relationship, what Paul is saying is this, respect and honor each other. Friends, when we submit to each other, as we interact with each other as fellow believers, or as a husband and wife, we will experience order, we will experience harmony, unity, peace in our relationships with each other, and specifically in our relationship with our spouses as a husband or wife. In verse 22, Paul specifically calls on wives to submit to their husbands. So he says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Paul's appeal is that married women should submit to their husbands the same way they submit to the Lord Jesus. It's very important for us to understand that we submit to Christ because we recognize him as our Lord, as our King, as our Savior, as our leader who deserves to be honored, who deserves to be respected. So as a married woman who submits to Christ, submitting to your husband means you respect and honor your husband as the one God has appointed as a leader in your family. Even though you're more educated than your husband, or you earn more money than your husband, or your, your social profile is higher than your husband, hey, you still need to submit to him as the one God has appointed to lead your family. Let me share with you some practical ways you can honor and respect your husband. Okay, ladies, are you ready to hear some ways you can practically honor and respect your husband? Be your husband's number one cheerleader as he leads your family. Don't become his critic or his opponent. Work together with your husband as his partner and teammate to solve your family problems and build your family together. Support your husband even when he makes decisions that you might not like, provided those decisions don't threaten the well-being of your family. And here is another one, another good one. Ladies, married women, don't say demeaning things to your husband when you are mad at him, when you're angry with him. Don't belittle your husband. Honor, respect your husband because that pleases Jesus. But guys, those who are married and even those who are not yet married, a wife submitting to a husband does not mean a wife is inferior to a husband. It doesn't mean a wife has no voice in a marriage or family. 
It doesn't mean she should not express her feelings or her opinions. It does not mean a wife supports a husband in doing what is evil in God's sight. And it does not mean a husband is free to torment, to torture, to mistreat his wife. Hey, it is important for us to submit to each other and wives submitting to their husbands. That is one of the ways we honor marriage. Thirdly and lastly, we honor marriage by practicing sacrificial love. Wow, that is so important. Though both husbands and wives ought to love each other, Paul particularly urges husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church. He told the church in Ephesus, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Who, he who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. The kind of love, ladies and gentlemen, Paul advises husbands to practice for their wives is sacrificial love. It is the love Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, demonstrated for us by laying down his life for us on the cross. Brothers, Christ, the greatest leader of all time, did not come to be served, but he came to serve. He came as a servant leader. When we love our wives sacrificially, guys, we are telling them, we are telling our children and our friends and, and the rest of the world that like our Lord Jesus, a servant leader, we are servant leaders in our families. And here are some practical ways, guys, we can practice practical love for our wives. Putting our wives' needs before our own needs. We don't use our power and authority to control or mistreat our wives. We don't hold grudges against our wives when they offend or hurt us. Listening to our wives, even when we are physically tired or when they say the same thing over and over again, and it happens. And here's another good one for you guys. Helping our wives do house chores, like washing dishes, washing clothes, looking after children. Oh, come on now, cooking. I know that is my weakness. <laughs> I promised my wife, you know, when we got married that I would learn, you know, to cook, but I've never learned to cook, and so I have to repent to my wife whenever that subject comes up. But hey, hey there are other things I do. Now, we need, guys, we need to be people who are available, husbands who are available, servant leaders who are available to help our wives do housework. So when you return home from work, you don't sit in the living room reading a, a newspaper or, you know, watching something on the internet or chatting with people on social media when your wife is dying with work. You need to be a servant leader who helps your wife do some of those things. So, God established marriage as a covenant relationship between a husband and wife. That means marriage must be honored. And we honor marriage by being faithful in marriage. We honor marriage by submitting to each other. And 
we honor marriage by practicing sacrificial love. When we honor marriage, God will bless our families. Now, my friend, watching me and listening to me, Jesus laid down his life for us. He died on the cross for our sake so that through him we will come into a relationship with God in which we become God's sons and daughters. It is a special relationship. It is a covenant relationship with God. Now, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, I encourage you today to respond to the love of Jesus who died for you on the cross by giving your life to Him today. So wherever you are, pray this prayer with me as you give your life to Jesus today. Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you gave your life for me. You died on the cross for me. Today, I respond to your love by giving you my life. Do in my life and with my life and through my life that which brings you glory. In your name I pray. And everybody says, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let's thank the people who have given their lives to Jesus today. Welcome to God's family, my brother, my sister. And now I'm turning back the service to Pastor Eddie. I hope you have been blessed by God's Word because God's Word brings light to our lives. And now it's time for us to give. Now Jesus said in Luke 69, use worldly wealth to gain yourselves friends. Because when this wealth is gone, you will be welcomed into your eternal dwellings. Now, Jesus was saying that we use worldly wealth, and that is money, to reach people with the most amazing news in the whole world, and that is the gospel. And guess what? Money comes, money goes. But when you invest your resources in the work of God, reaching people, people last forever, and they will welcome you into your eternal dwellings, and that is heaven. So give cheerfully. Give sacrificially. Because God loves a generous giver. Why? Because He is generous to you. And now get to your tithe, get your offering. I'm going to pray for your offering right now, and then we can give together. Let's pray. Now, Father, thank you so much for the giving of your people. Thank you so much for blessing us with money. And money belongs to you. All of it belongs to you. But today, we want to take a portion of this money and invest into your house, into your kingdom for the work of reaching people, people that you love, people that last forever with the most amazing news, the good news of the gospel. Now bless both the giver and bless the gift. In Jesus' name I do pray and everybody say amen. Now here is a video that shows how you and I can give. God bless you. Please take a moment to visit our website at watotochurch.com forward slash giving to find the most convenient giving option for you. You can also scan the QR code on your screen to open up our giving page. If you'd like to give via mobile money, you can find all the instructions for your specific carrier and respective codes. A secure option for those who wish to give through Visa or MasterCard debit or credit cards is also available Details for other giving options, including checks, bank transfer, or agent banking, can also be found on this page. Should you stay close to one of our 14 celebration points, we have secure gift boxes available for you to drop off your envelope if this is more convenient. And for those of you watching from Juba, South Sudan, we have giving options especially for you through bank transfer and Mgurush. Thank you for your faithfulness in helping to build God's kingdom.
God is a God of a thousand names and He's deserving of every one of them. Yes, 
Yes, he is. You know, Paul, after services like this, I just feel encouraged and uplifted and equipped. We truly hope that you have been blessed by today's service, you and your families. Now, if you've given your life to Christ, we are super, super excited for that decision that you've made today. Why don't you get in touch with us? Let us know that you've done just that by simply clicking in the comment section below. There's a link that has just appeared. Or send us an email, connect at watototochurch.com. If you've missed any of our previous sermon series, you can find them on YouTube or on the Watoto Church podcast, or as well on the Watoto Church application. Yes, if you've not downloaded the Watoto Church application, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, download it on the Play Store or the App Store or any other place where you get your applications from. Absolutely. And if you'd like to just talk to somebody, simply get in touch with the numbers appearing on your screen. Yeah. There'll be someone on the other end to just do life with you. Yeah. But also, yeah. do you listen to radio? If you do, try 104.1 Power FM where it's all about love. There's always somebody ready yeah. to just sprinkle some love to yeah. your day. That's right. And uh, Paul, it's been family month around here. I want to encourage you not to do life on your own. Here at Toto Church, you have beautiful cell families that are waiting on you. If you're not a part of a cell, please get in touch with us. Cell at matototochurch.com to be plugged into a cell family. Absolutely. Now, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate yeah. that you could be part of service. Absolutely. Till next time, goodbye. Bye-bye.